Welcome to the CKA series, this is the part 3 in this series, and we will cover some more scenarios in this video. The 15th question is to create a static pod with below specifications, and it should run on node 01. Name should be static pod, and the image should be Redis, weightage of this question in 2%, without delay let's go to the cluster. Let's check the nodes first. We have two nodes, as per the question we have to run a static pod on the worker node. Let's create a pod YAML file first. Yes our YAML file is ready, next we need to find the static pod's location in the node 01. Let's get into the worker node using ssh command. In the kubelet config file we can find the static pod location. Ok this is the location, let's go to that. Ok we have to copy static pod yaml file to here, so just exit. We have to use scp command for copying file to the worker node. OK file is copied to under slash root. Let's get into the worker node. We need to move this file to manifest folder. Done, let's exit from the worker node. Let's check the pods now. Yes our static pod is running. We have successfully completed this task. Let's go to the next scenario. The next question is also about static pod creation, but from a different perspective. The sixteenth question is, a static pod named static pod using the engine x image. And it is currently running on the control plane node, we have to move this static pod to node 01 without making any other changes. This is tricky question. Let's go to the cluster. Let's check the current pods first. We can see one static pod is running on control plane. We have to move this pod to the worker node. First find the static pod's location.
OK, we can see the static pod YAML file. Let's get into the worker node and find the static pod location. We have to copy static pod YAML file from control plane to here. OK, let's use SCP command for copying files. Yes file is copied, next we need to delete the static pod from the control plane. Done, our pod is moved to worker node. We have successfully completed this task. The 17th question is, you can find a pod named multipod, is running in the cluster and that is logging to a volume. You need to insert a sidecar container into the pod, that will also read the logs from the volume using the tail command. The sidecar specifications are given below. The sidecar image should be BusyBox version 1.28, and the container name should be sidecar, and also need to mount the volume slash var slash BusyBox slash log. I will explain the question with this diagram. We have a container, and that container is mounted into storage. So the logs of the container will be stored in the storage. We need to add another container into the pod, and we need to mount the same storage volume into the new container. So the sidecar container can access the same log files in the main container. I will show you how to achieve this. You can see a pod is running in our cluster. Let's curl this pod. You can see the pod is listening. First, we need to take the pod configuration to a file. I am going to take a backup of this YAML file in the exam. You have to take a backup for precaution if you are dealing with existing running pods. Let's open the YAML file. This is the running time configuration file of the pod. In order to add a container into a running pod, we need to recreate it. Updation is not possible, so actually we are going to take the existing pod settings and we will add a new sidecar configuration to this YAML file, then we will destroy the existing pod, 
and we will recreate the pod with new YAML file, that is our plan. We can see lots of configurations in this YAML file, but we need only the pod name, container image, container name, and the volume part of this file, rest of all we can remove. Once again, please note, we need only the metadata, container image, container name, and volume mount, this much is enough. Okay, this much information is only needed for recreating this pod. Let's save and exit. So, this is the actual YAML file of the existing running pod, we are going to add a sidecar into it. Let's copy the existing container section. Change the container name to sidecar. Change the image to BusyBox 1.28. We don't need port. We need to change the volume mount path as per the question. We need to run the command inside the container for reading the logs, we can copy it from the question. You can see the main container and the sidecar containers are sharing the same host storage volume, so the log files that are writing to the volume will be accessible from the sidecar also. Okay, we have to delete the existing pod first. Let's apply the new YAML file. Yes, it is running. You can see two containers in our new pod. Let's curl for checking the running condition of our pod. Pod is listening. Let's check the logs. Yes, we are getting the logs of the main container through sidecar container. 
we can see some old logs, because the old pod has mounted a host volume, so those logs are persisted. Let's cross check once again. Yes, we can see the new logs. The next question is to create a new pod named admin pod using the image busy box 1.28. Ensure the pod has permission to set the system time. The container should sleep for 1000 seconds, which means we have to create a pod with some capabilities and has to run a command inside the container. Okay, let's go to the cluster. This time we can go to the documentation first. Search for capabilities. We have to take the fourth YAML files as a reference. Let's copy it. Name should be admin pod. And the image should be busy box. We don't need net admin capabilities, so we can remove it. Next we need to run a seep command in the container, so we can take this line of code. Oh, we made a mistake, image is not Redis, it should be BusyBox. Okay, let's apply this YAML file. Yes. Our pod is running. Okay, we have successfully completed this task. We can quickly switch to service and network topics. First, we are going to services. In services, you can expect a couple of scenarios. First one is to expose a pod through cluster IP. Second is to expose a pod through node port. Same way you can expect expose a deployment though cluster IP and node port. 
Next you can expect a question for change the existing node port service port to another port. Next is more interesting topic, ingress. If you want to expose a pods through a URL then we have to use ingress service. In this video we will cover one question, and the rest of all questions we will cover on the next part. Without further delay let's go to the question. The 19th question is, you can find a pod, web pod, is running on the cluster, and the pod port is 80. You have to create a service named WebSVC and expose it through node port 30200 and service port 8080. Which means the existing running pod you have to expose through node port 30200 after implementing. It should accessible through port 30200 of each and every nodes. And also it should accessible through port 8080 internally. Okay, let's go to the cluster. First we can create this scenario, as per the question the pod should listen on port 80, so let's create a nginx pod. In the exam you can find an existing running pod on the cluster, nginx default port is 80 so it will listen on port 80. OK our pod is ready, let's check is it listening on port 80 or not. Yes it is listening. Next we need to expose it through node port 30200, ok we can create yaml file first, in order to expose a pod, we have to use expose command. Name should be web svc. Type should be node port. Oh sorry, I forget to mention the port of service for internal listen, as per the question we have to expose it through port 8080 internally. Ok our YAML file is ready, let's edit it. Target port should be port 80, which is the port of the Nginx container. Here we have to mention the node port, otherwise it will pick a random node port, as per the question we have to expose it through port 30200. Yes our YAML file is ready. If we apply this YAML file, then this service will listen port through port 8080 internally, and port 30200 through node port, and the target of this service is port 80 of the web pod. OK, let's apply it. Yes our service is created and it is listening through port 8080 internally, and port 30200 through node port, let's check it.
Yes, our pod is listening through both nodes port 30200. Let's try to describe it. You can see the service is pointing to the pod port 80. Done, we are successfully completed this task. Actually, we can solve this problem in multiple ways. I will show you the another way. Let's delete the service and try to create again. This time we are not creating any YAML file, and just let it run the pod with a random node port. You can see this time the service is exposing through a random port. We have not to mention this port 31476 anywhere. Actually if we are not mentioned then it will take a random port, so we can change the port through editing the service, first check whether it is working or not. Yes we can see it is not working, so let's edit. OK, let's change the target port to 80. And the node port to 30200. Now it should work. Let's save it. It will auto deploy. Yes, our pod is listening through node port. I'm recommending to you to solve a question in multiple ways like through making YAML files and imperative commands, take the help of documentation, etc. Because in the exam, if you are forget any commands, then this will help you. Actually, I'm forget to show you whether it is listening thorough on port 8080 of cluster IP or not. Let's check that also. You can see the service is listening through port 8080 of cluster IP. We are successfully completed this task. We will cover all service scenarios in the upcoming video. Thank you.